Now that you know a bit more about the timeline, how to navigate it, and how to set keys, let's talk about customizing our motion using the interpolation panel. The interpolation panel is located to the right of the timeline. You'll notice that because we don't have a key selected, we can't actually use the interpolation panel. But as soon as we select a key, the interpolation panel activates. At the top of the panel, we have our interpolation types. We've got hold, linear, cubic, and cubic value. Forget cubic value for now, we'll cover that in a different video. Below our interpolation types, we have our interpolation graph. This graph represents how our property is going to change from one key to the next. The x-axis represents time. The y-axis represents the change. You'll also notice this blue bar on the side. This shows us the current position of the playhead. So as we move from one key to the next, you can see that our playhead moves there on the graph as well. Now below that, we have these numbers, and these numbers represent the slope or curve of the graph. We'll use these a bit later on. Now that you're familiar with the panel, let's start talking about the different interpolation types. When we set a key, by default, we'll have a linear interpolation. This represents a constant change over time. So if we play back our animation, you can see that the ball moves from the top of the artboard down to the bottom at a constant rate. Hold interpolation will hold the current value until the next key. So in this case, it's going to hold this Y value until we reach the next key, where it'll instantly snap down to the bottom. Now, these two interpolation types have fairly niche use cases. Hold is useful when we're messing with PNG sequences or turning the opacity of an object on and off, and we don't want to see it fade in and fade out. And linear, we might use when we're animating a robot, because robots are the only thing that move at a constant speed. Everything else has some sort of acceleration and deceleration. And that's where cubic interpolation comes in. By default, the cubic interpolation curve gives us a nice easy in and easy out. You can see when we play back the animation just how different the motion is. What's great is we also have these handles here that allow us to change the curve, which give us drastically different results. So, for example, that curve gives us a different result than this curve. We can even drag our curve to an extreme where we go past the final value. So that gives you like a little overshot. We can do it the same with the other handle as well, like this. And so this gives us a lot of flexibility when we're changing the interpolation between the properties. One thing to note about interpolation is that interpolation only works from one key to the next. So when I apply a cubic interpolation curve on this key, you'll notice that the motion is different in the first half than it is in the second half of the animation. And that's because the next key goes back to linear interpolation. So between this key and this key, it's linear. And between this one and this one, it's cubic. Up to this point, we've been talking about setting interpolation on one key at a time, but you can also set interpolation on multiple keys at the same time. So let's say, for example, we wanted all of our keys on this timeline to have the same interpolation. We can mark key, select them all, go to our interpolation panel, select cubic, and then play our animation back. Now, obviously, we want to change up some of the interpolation curves here. So, for example, maybe when the ball is at its highest point during these bounces, so there, there, and there, we want those three keys to share some sort of interpolation curve. Well, what we can do is select those three keys by holding shift, and then we can either click on them or marquee select each one of them until we have those three selected, and then we can give them the correct animation curve like that. We also have the ability to copy a curve from one key to another. So let's say, for example, uh, we want to use this curve right here as the ball bounces off the ground for this key, because right now this key just has that default cubic curve. We could try to mimic the curve, but if we want it to be the exact same as before, I can select the key that has the curve that I want, go down here, select our numerical values, and then use the copy shortcut. So if you're on Mac, that's Command C. And if you're on Windows, that's Control C. And then select the key that we want to paste that curve to. Select its little numerical value box down here. And then hit Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows. And then hit Enter. And you'll see that now those two keys have the same curve. So when we play back the animation, we have a nice looking bounce animation.
Now, one thing to keep in mind as you're setting your interpolation is when you select a top level key and you set the interpolation, you're changing the interpolation of any property for that object that's been keyed at that location on the timeline. So when I expand this ellipse, you'll see that I have both X and Y properties keyed. And if we select each of those keys, you'll see that they both have this cubic interpolation. But we can also change the interpolation of these values independent of one another. So let's say we want our x value to change at a linear rate, but we want our y value to change at a cubic rate. You can see that we get a much different um, result depending on how we mix and match those um, cubic curves.